So in this section, we're looking at logarithmic functions. So after this video or this lecture, I'm hoping that you'll be able to change exponential statements um, to logarithmic statements and vice versa. So taking a logarithmic statement, be able to rewrite that as an exponential statement. I want you to be able to evaluate logarithmic expressions, be able to look at a logarithmic function and determine the domain, graph logarithmic functions, and solve logarithmic functions. Okay, so let's get into what is a logarithmic function. Let's go back to what we were just talking about, which were exponential functions. And so recall, if we looked at the graph of an exponential function, y equals b to the x, we had a graph that looks similar to this. If our value of b was greater than one, and we had a graph that looks similar to this if our value of our base was between, but not including zero and one. If you look at this, notice that these are both one-to-one -one functions. So meaning they pass both the horizontal and the vertical line test. So for every input, we have exactly one output. Um, recall that if we had a one-to-one -one function, then we had an inverse for that function. And so let's look at y equals b to the x, and let's solve for the inverse function. And let's call that f of x. equals b raised to the x power. So recall, we talked about how to solve for inverse functions. If it was one-to-one -one function, it had an inverse. Recall, we rewrote our function notation as y. And so we have y equals b to the x. And then we swapped our x and our y values, and then we solved for y. And once we got y by itself, that was our inverse function. So if we swap our x and our y values here, we have x is equal to b raised to the y power. But we have a problem here because we don't know how to get that variable y out of the exponent and get that to be y equals. And so they come up with a definition and they say, well, let's this be log base b of x is equal to y. So these are equivalent statements. Couple stipulations here. Remember our base of our exponential, that value of b had to be greater than zero and b could not equal one. Other thing is, notice, let's go back and look at our domain of our exponential function. So recall our domain of our exponential function is the range of the inverse function and vice versa. The range of our function is equal to the domain of the inverse function. And so our domain of this exponential function, recall is negative infinity to infinity, where our range was not including, but zero to infinity. And so for our inverse function, y equals log base b of x, our domain has to be bigger than zero. So zero to infinity and our range are gonna be all real numbers negative infinity to infinity. So we need a stipulation on here for our log. Um, our argument of our log, in this case, we'll call our argument as x. That argument always has to be bigger than zero. So 
So let's look at some examples where we're going back and forth. So you wanna get good at taking a log function and rewriting it as an exponential function or an exponential function and rewriting it as a logarithmic function. So let's look at a couple of examples. So looking at this, we have an example in front of us, y is equal to log base three of 81. So the base of our log, which is three, is the base of our exponential function. So we have three, the answer to our log is just the exponent. So three raised to the y power is equal to 81. So recall, we were just looking at exponential functions, manipulating the bases to be the same. If we had b to the x is equal to the b to the y, then we could drop our bases and just set our exponents equal to each other, x is equal to y. And so let's manipulate 81 to be base three. So looking at that, the three to the first is three, three squared is nine, three cubed, nine times three is 27 and 27 is times three is 81. So three to the fourth is 81. So we have here three to the y power equals three to the fourth power. And so we manipulated the bases to be the same. And so we get y is equal to four. So what if we had y is equal to log base three of the square root of 27. Okay, so first we write this in exponential form. So the, again, the base of our log is the base of the exponential. So we have three raised to the y power is equal to the square root of 27. Okay, so let's start manipulating this. So first you need to remember that we can rewrite um, radicals as rational exponents. And so if we had the square root of b, this is the same thing as b raised to the one half power. If it was the nth root of b, the root that you're taking, in this case, the nth root, the n is in the denominator. So this one is um, one over n is our exponent. So n is in the denominator of that exponent. So this would be to the one over n power. Okay, so let's first rewrite this 27. Um, square root of 27 is 27 to the one half power using those rules of rewriting a radical as a rational exponent. So we have here three to the y is equal to 27. Square root of 27 is the same thing as 27 to the one half power. I notice that I can manipulate 27 to be base three. So 27 is the same thing as three cubed raised to the one half power. We reviewed rules of exponents in the last video earlier in this class. And so power to power, remember we multiply our exponents. So three times one half gives us three halves. So we have three raised to the three halves power on this other side. We manipulated the bases to be the same. And so now we can say y is equal to three halves. Okay, so the directions for this example says, um, find the exact value of each logarithm without using a calculator. So here we have log base three of one ninth. So you're trying to think about what exponent am I gonna raise my base of three to? So three to what power, let's just call it x, is equal to one ninth. So again, we can manipulate our bases to be the same. 
So the same thing as three to the X is equal to one over nine could be rewritten as three squared. We can use properties of exponents, bring up that three squared, change the sign of the exponent to the numerator so that one over three squared is the same thing as three raised to the negative two power. So now we manipulated the bases to be the same. So we can say X is equal to negative two. So what if it had been a log of one third of nine? Okay, so the base is one third. So one third is our base of our exponential. We're thinking of what can I raise this one third by, let's just call it y, to give us back the argument of the log, which is nine. So one third raised to the y power is equal to nine. So I notice I can manipulate one third and nine to both have base three. So one third, we can bring that three up into the numerator and change the sign of the exponent. So one third is the same thing as three to the negative one power, raise the y equals, and nine is the same thing as three squared. Power to power is multiplication. So three to the negative one power raised to the y power is three raised to the negative y power equals three squared negative y is equal to two, so y would have to equal negative two. What if it had been log of the square root of three, base square root of three of nine? So again, the base of our logarithm, which is the square root of three, raised to what power, let's call it t this time, is equal to our argument nine. So notice I can manipulate again, um, in this case, square root of three and nine to both be base three. So rewriting that radical as a rational exponent, square root of three is the same thing as three raised to the one half power, all raised to the t power equals, and nine is the same thing as three squared. Power to power is multiplication. So we have three raised to the one half times t equals three squared. So we have one half t equals two. Get rid of the one half in front of the t. We can multiply both sides by two. So we get t is equal to four. If you have a log, which is base e, so if you have a log base e of x, we normally write this as the natural log ln of x. Okay, so this is the natural log. is a logarithmic function with base e. And a lot of times we'll say, and you'll hear me say ln of x. So I'm just talking about the natural log of x. So knowing that if we had the natural log of e, I know my base is e, if that's the natural log. And if it helps you to start out, just start writing that as log base e of e. Same thing. So rewriting this, this is saying my base e and my log, I'm going to raise that to what power to give me back e. So e to the y is equal to e. What does y have to be? Well, if you don't have an exponent, then it's exponent is one, it's just not shown. Then we know y is equal to one. 
what if it was a natural log of e raised to the fifth power? So this is saying in exponential form, e raised to what power, let's just call it x, is equal to e to the fifth. Well, then x would have to equal five. So natural log of e is just really our exponent. So if you have the natural log of e raised to some function, let's say g of x, this is saying e to what power y is equal to e raised to the g of x. Well, y would have to just be that exponent of e g of x. If you have the natural log of square root of e, well, let's rewrite that. That's a natural log of e raised to the one half power. Square root of e is the same thing as e to the one half. So this is saying e to what power? Gives me back e to the one half. Well, that power, which I, in this case, put question mark, has to equal one half. Okay, so we looked at the definition of logarithmic functions. And now let's go back. We talked about um, the logarithmic function being the inverse function of our exponential function. We talked about, recall, that the domain and the range are swaps. And so let's look at y equals b raised to the x in the case where So let's just do one. Let's say y equals two raised to the x power. So if we look at this and we plot points, well, we know when x is zero, two to the zero is one. When x is one, we get two to the first power is two. When x is two, we get two squared, which is four. When x is negative one, two to the negative one power, bring it down to the x, um, denominator to make that exponent positive is one divided by two to the first power, which is one half. So negative one gives us one half. So that's y equals two to the x. The inverse function, let's call this f of x. is equal to log base two of x. But recall our x and our y values swap. So our points x, y here for our original function f of x, to get our points, if we have our original function, we can just swap our x and y values. So our point is now gonna be y, x. Okay, so my point zero, one now becomes one, zero. My point one, two for the inverse function is two, one. My point two, four becomes four, two. And my point negative one, one half becomes one half negative one. And so if we now graph, graph this f inverse equals log base two of x and plot the points that we just got. So we now have a point at one, zero. We have a point at two, one. We have a point at four, two. And we have a point at one half negative. So if we look at this, our graph looks similar to this. Which recall, 
Another way to think of our graphs of our function and its inverse function, they were symmetrical across that line, y equals x. And so if we plotted that, And so if we folded our paper across that line, y equals x, we would have that inverse function, which we have over here. So this is actually the general shape of our log base b of x, where b is greater than one. Notice in here, we have a vertical asymptote instead of the horizontal asymptote that we had for our exponential function. So this graph, let's just state this down here. So if we have y equals log base b of x, where b is greater than one, the general shape of our graph Looks like the following. So notice that this is strictly increasing function. We're going up from left to right. Our domain is zero to infinity, not including zero. And our range, we're hitting all of our numbers from negative infinity to infinity. And we have a vertical asymptote. on the line x equals zero. If we were to graph y equals log base b of x and our base was between 0 and 1, then when we graph this, we have a graph that looks similar to this. So this is a strictly decreasing function. Our domain is the same, all real numbers bigger than zero. So parentheses zero to infinity. Our range is the same, negative infinity to infinity. And we still have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So those are properties of the graphs of logarithms. So just like with what we did with exponential functions and earlier in the semester, we can use transformations of functions to help us graph our logarithmic functions. So in front of us, we want to graph y equals log base 2. In parentheses, our argument is x minus 1 and our parentheses, and then we're adding 3 outside of that logarithmic function. And so that minus 1 tells me I'm shifting horizontally. And it's opposite of what I would think, so it shifts it to the right. This plus 3. Outside, this is shifting it vertically, so we're shifting up three units. So we can either think about points that we had gotten in a previous example for y equals log base 2 of x and do transformations that way. 
or we can plot points. If I was going to plot points, I would rewrite this in exponential form. Um, if I was to rewrite this in exponential form, look at the following. Um, I would first want to isolate my log. I would have to subtract three. And so I would have y minus three equals log base two of x minus one. Um, so this is two raised to the y minus three power, <clears throat> excuse me, is equal to x minus one. I would actually get x by itself. I would add one to both sides and I have two y to minus three plus one equals x. So when I plotted points, normally I usually choose values for x, plug them in and solve for y, but in this case, I would plug in values for y and solve for x. But we can go back over here and we can remember points too. And we could think about our points x, y on y equals the log base two of x. Transformations that we said, we were shifting it to the right one. So I'd be adding one to my x value and up three. So I would be adding three to my y value. So if I had had x was 1, 2 to the 0 is 1. Um, if I had y was 2, 2 squared is 4. If it was y was 1, 2 to the first is 2. If y was negative 1, I'd have 2 to the negative 1 power, which is half over here. So using those points, I could get my other points. So one zero by adding one to my x value, one plus one is two, adding three to zero, I get three. So I have a new point two three. My point four two is now gonna become adding one to my x value is five and adding three to my y value of two plus three is five. My point two one, my original, but the transformation becomes two plus one, which is three, and one plus three, which is four. And my point one half, negative one, well, adding one to one half is 1.5 or three halves. And negative one plus three is two. So if we look at this and graph it, I have a point at 2, 3. I have a point at 5, 5. I have a point at 3, 4. And I have a point at 1.5, 2. So I shifted things to the right one before I had a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So shifting that to the right one, I have a new vertical asymptote, which is gonna be at x equals one. So I'm gonna get closer and closer to that, but never hit x equals one. And so my new vertical asymptote here is x equals one. And my domain has to be bigger than one. So one to infinity, not including my range is the same negative infinity to infinity. So you can use transformations um, of functions that help you graph logarithmic functions.
So one last thing that you are going to be able to or need to do in this um, section is be able to find the domain of our logarithmic function. And when we're finding the domain of our logarithmic function, remember we have to have a log of a positive number, whatever the argument of the log is. So if we had f of x is equal to 3 minus 2 log base 4, argument is x over 2 minus 5. And if it asked us to find the domain of f of x. So again, we can only have a log of a positive number. And so this x over 2 minus 5, this has to be greater than zero. Okay, so we've solved linear inequalities before. Let's just solve it, solving it just like there was an equal sign. The only thing we have to be careful of is if we multiply or divide by a negative. So we're gonna add two to both sides. We get x over two is greater than five. We wanna get rid of the two in front of the, um, in the denominator, we have x divided by two, so we can get rid of that two in the denominator by multiplying both sides by two. So we get x has to be greater than 10. So our domain, we can state it as an inequality, x is greater than 10 or parentheses 10 to infinity. So that was a quick introduction to logarithmic functions. We'll look more at logarithmic functions and solving those equations at the next class period and looking at um, applications of both logarithm and logarithmic functions and exponential functions.